Antonio Nomi. Find any of them? You're lucky. The buck wants to buy him a new wife. He's a cherry cow Apache, so he'll take your money. You better give me that gun. It's hard to keep your temper if you ain't used to them. <laughs> They'd aggravate the flies off a buffalo. I'll keep my temper. You have to. You'd be an Indian scout as long as I have, and you learn to be patient. I've been patient for 18 months. Let's go. <laughs> He wants to see the color of your money. How can I be sure he was in on the holdup? That's where he got this withered arm. He caught a chunk of lead. All right, smoke him out. Hey, na. He was with a bunch of young bucks led by a renegade Indian named Tana. A white man hired them. What about the white man? This white man, who used to work for a stage and freighter line, knew about a mine payroll going through on the regular stage run. The white man filled Tana and his bucks full of fire juice, got them to raid the coach when it was going through Carnes Canyon. Promised to make them all rich engines. <laughs> Only made most of them dead engines. And got away with all the money for himself. What about the passengers? Oh, Yawatawa! Billy Kana over here na shoote. The white man shot them right there. All except the girl. What happened to her? Uh. I said to her. He kept her prisoner for three days. Then she killed herself with this. It's the white man's knife. Go back to the white man. What did he look like? Everything he can remember. Hai un chao. Hai namu. Big. Sake. Strong. Seg. Yellow hair. Tsitsangwa. Uh, Blue eyes. Natsi natsauke. A scar on his right cheek and spoke Apache like it was his own language. Hey on. Oh, that's all he knows. Big, strong, yellow hair, blue eyes, and a scar on his right cheek. Let's hightail. How much owe you, Mac? Not a thing. If I'm not being too nosy, you working for the mining company that lost the payroll? No. Then what's your personal interest in this man? Like you said, personal. I doubt if you ever catch him. I got the rest of my life to try. And if you do? I'm gonna kill him. That girl on the stagecoach, maybe. Maybe. Let's 
scar on his right cheek. A stage and freighter man. Stage and freighter man. Downstairs, room number nine is supposed to be empty. If you look at your key, you'll find that it's room number six. Oh, I, <laughs> I had it upside down. Excuse me. You're new in Corner Creek, aren't you? Yes, just got in. Perhaps you can help me. Will you come in? What's the matter with her? She, uh, why, uh, she doesn't feel well. She's drunk. I know. I've got to get her back to her ranch. Her buggy's in the alley in back of the hotel. 
If you could take her home. If she drove in, she can drive back when she sobers up. I didn't want her to go home alone. I suppose it is a favor to ask. I need sleep. I've ridden a long ways today. Then I'm sorry I mentioned it. Your sleep is far more important. Your room's across the hall. It's all right. I'm Kate Hardis and I run this hotel. You run this place? Well, what's so strange about that? Oh, nothing, lady, nothing. My name's Chris Danning. Abby. Abby, wake up. Did you know not? Abby. Oh, Jonah, no. Take Jonah, no. That's Apache talk. Yes. She learned it from her husband. Who is her husband? Younger Miles. Miles, younger Miles. Is he the man that runs the freight line across the street? Yes, it is. Now, if you'll excuse me. Oh, uh... You misunderstood me a moment ago, ma'am. I'll see that she gets home safely. I was just thinking it funny you are trusting a stranger to take her. I didn't want to shame her by asking someone she knows. Besides, if her husband comes looking for her, I want to be here to tell him a lie or two. Just where is this Rainbow Ranch? At the south edge of town. The alley leads to the road that passes Rainbow. Mm -hmm. The horses will take you. I'll find it. She's all right. Who are you? I might ask you the same question. Get out of that buggy before I kick you out. I'll do my talking from here. Well, huh? What? Maybe you'll talk, huh? What were you doing with Mrs. Miles? Kate Hardison asked me to take her home. She's been that way since I first saw her. Well, why didn't you say so sooner? Saved us both a lot of trouble. You should have asked me. You men take Mrs. Miles home. I'll see you back to town. Much obliged. I get awfully scared in the dark. Yeah, I'll bet. figure, Danning. Riding on through, we're going to stop over for a while. It depends. Well, like I told you, if you want to stick around, Miles can always use another man-sized hand out at the Rainbow. Good boss, too. I'll think it over. Good. Uh, about tonight, well, like I said, I made a mistake. Ah, oh, forget it. Match? Thanks. About Mrs. Miles, what happened tonight is younger Miles' private business. If you're smart, you'll keep it that way. If he was smart, he'd keep her home. <laughs> Mr. Danny, you couldn't have made it to Rainbow and back. Who did you meet? The Rainbow crew. They took over. Oh, Abby will be all right then. Which one of them hit you? Ernie is somebody. You came back in pretty good shape. You must have hit him, too. Well, I got in a couple. 
<laughs> Good for you. Everybody wants to hit Ernie, but nobody ever does. Oh, is that why you ask a stranger to take her home? I didn't know you'd run into them. I'm glad you're not hurt. Yeah, I'll second that. You must be hungry. I've got a large platter of steaks and a double wedge of apple pie. Well, well, what are we waiting for? Kate! Oh, would you do me another favor first? Well, I, uh... Come with me. There's someone outside I want you to help me with. Another drunk? Oh, no, I've handled my last one of those for tonight. This is my father, Walt Hardison. Dad, this is Chris Danny. How do you do? How do you do, sir? So are you the hand Ernie Combs wants for Rainbow? You've got good ears, Mr. Hardison. A cripple's pastime. Oh. Thank you. The good book is also a cripple's pastime, and a very pleasant one. Although some people try to run away from it. That's very hard to do. It's your bedtime, Dad. I think you better come in now. When are you going to stop this sort of thing? No, nobody saw me. You had a strange man bring you home tonight, didn't you? I don't remember. That's the trouble. You don't remember. I've told you a dozen times. You can drink yourself into a stupor for all I care. But do it in your own room. Don't want anyone seeing you. Of course you don't. Because a respectable wife keeps nice folks from talking. That couldn't have been the reason why you didn't marry that girl you moved to Brush Flats. Could it, Younger? Because it hasn't stopped you from making regular visits over there. You and your pretense of respectability. And respectable is what we're going to be. To the people outside this house, anyway. I've worked too long and too hard to build up my position around here. I didn't get married to have a drunken wife pull me down. Of course you didn't. You married me because you thought I was... Pretty enough to dress up this house and wear fashionable clothes and impress people you can use. That's why you married me. Can you blame me for trying to forget that, Younger? Can you? Come in yet. Spend most of your time out the ranch. You, uh, Makia, his partner? No, and Charlie. Charlie Weatherby and the ranch no partner. Miles left Makia's name on the sign when he bought him out. Uh -huh. I seem to remember the deal now, uh, quite some time ago. Oh, not so long, but a year and a half. Eighteen months, eh? About that. for a minute. You wait here. Well, if I ain't just exactly an eye shot when you want me, Miss Harms, just give one whistle like that. Easier than that. I'll poke my head in the door of that saloon. You sure set on running me down one way or another. I extend my apologies, mister. And to show you I'm sincere, I'll buy you a drink. You made a deal, mister. Here's to an easy saddle and good riding, friend. 
May your boots never get dusty and your guns never get rusty. Longfellow, huh? I reckon. I don't know what I'm going to try. All right, boys. Hello, Jack. All right, step up, men. First round's on me. Take care of the boys at the card table. Sure, Ernie. Hello, Danny. <laughs> Oh, now, Jack, you know better than that. Get up that stuff with a bead on it. The best is none too good for my friends. That's a little better. Must be lush country when ranch hands can toss money around like that. Ranch hands? Ha. Huh. They're younger, Miles' personal gun hands. Them's the fellows what's keep hidden in business. This Miles must be pretty big around here. What kind of a man is he? Judge for yourself is coming in the door now. Set him up again, Jack. Special for the boss. Coming up. That fellow dining around. Over in the corner with Andy. Big, strong. Yellow hair, blue eyes, and a scar on his right cheek. I'm younger Miles. Ernie says you can't make up your mind about working for me. That's what I told him. And he wants to buy you a drink. Huh? Oh, sure. When I pay a man, I expect him to be loyal enough to keep his mouth shut. And if you don't pay him? He still gets paid. Some other way. Hey, you there. You know Mrs. Miles? Sure. I took her home last night. She was drunk. Dead drunk. Serve a notice on all you evildoers to make yourself scarce. Because the majesty of the law has just arrived. Well, just in time. Yes, sir, Sheriff, just in time. How's that lovely daughter of mine, Miles? Abby's fine, Sheriff. We were just talking about her. Good, good. You couldn't talk about a nicer girl. I don't believe I've seen you before. You're a stranger in these parts, aren't you? Welcome to Coroner Creek. I'm Sheriff O'Hay. Any friend of Miles is a friend of mine. Come over and have a drink with us. Some other time, Sheriff. Why'd you let him get away with it? He wanted me to draw. I wonder why. May I see you a moment? Who is it? I'm Della Harms. What do you want? I said, what do you want? I wonder if you could help me. I doubt it. I need a man to run my ranch. Not interested. The work wouldn't be too hard. Sorry? So am I. After all, I suppose it was foolish of me to think that you'd be interested in my fight with younger Miles. Wait, who did you say you were? Della Harms. Why do you particularly want me to work for you? I heard you talking to Miles downstairs. He's never taken that from any man before. That's why I thought you'd be the one to stop the rainbow crowd. Stop it? Yes, stop younger Miles. He came here with money and it's given him means to make more. A stage line, Rainbow Ranch. Now he's after my place, the Box H. Well, if you have title, he can't steal your property. He has ways that he can, legally. You see... There isn't enough open range for both our outfits, and he's trying to squeeze me out. But with you on my side, we might do the squeezing. Yes, we might, Mrs. Holmes. Thank you so much. Chris, isn't it? Mm-hmm. We'll show Miles that he can't bluff us. Congratulate me. I've hired him. He's a stranger here, Della. A drifter. You don't know anything about him. I know enough about him to want him to work for me. 
And that settles that. Well, Kate, how do you like the new material? It's beautiful. Make a lovely dress. Must have been expensive. It wasn't cheap. The best they had in Kansas City. When Roy was alive, he used to say, Della, every time you get a new dress, I have to cut out a dozen head of cattle to pay for it. Speaking of cattle, I've got to get back to the ranch. Tell Chris to hurry. Goodbye, dear. Andy! Already, Miss Holmes? Yes. Andy, you ride Mr. Danny's horse. Huh? Uh, yes, ma'am. Hey, tell me something, will you? How come Miss Himes hired that drifter? Don't, don't tell me, I know. Most women ain't got no more sense than sheep herder. I reckon. What did you expect to gain by insulting Abby Miles in public? What has she ever done to you? Nothing. Was it to get it younger, Miles? Because if it was, you've hurt her much more than you can ever hurt him. For the room. And now you're going to work for Della Harms. That's right. Have you stopped to think of what you'll start? From what Miss Harms told me, that's already started. What are you after, anyway? Now, that's my business. From what I've seen of your business, it means nothing but trouble here. Why don't you ride on through? When I'm ready. You're sick with hating, aren't you? Why don't you finish it now and go? I'll finish it. A little every day. Mr. Danning, you ride with me. Andy will bring your horse. Yes, ma'am. There goes another foreman of Della Harms that we'll have to run out of this part of the country. Well, what's wrong with him? I don't know. The spirit is dead. You can see it in his eyes. They're ugly. But his face isn't. He just doesn't care. Then why should you? I don't. sitting at the end of the rainbow head. <laughs> That's right, Mr. Danny. And I don't imagine he's the sort of man who would take kindly to losing that position. Losing is the one word that drives younger Miles crazy. Crazy. You know, Mrs. Holmes, that's an idea. That green patch there starts at the box H. His two since when, Doug? Andy, do as I say. Yes, ma'am. Oops. <laughs> Thank you. Well, how do you like it? Pretty fancy. I just can't stand this order. Nice layout. Did you and your husband build it together? No, he had it running when I met him. Where was that? Kansas City. He was back on a cattle shipment. I'd never been west until we got married. That was eight years ago. He's been dead now for over two. Must have been pretty tough for you, alone. It has been lately. Well, I'll take these in the house. You wait here. I want to introduce you to the rest of the hands. Yes, boss lady. Chris, I want you to be happy and comfortable here. Boys, I want you to meet my new foreman, Chris Danning. Chris, 
This is Frank Yorty and Leach Conover. How do you do? How do you do? I'll leave you all to get acquainted. After supper, we'll discuss our plans. Foreman, huh? Annie's been telling us about you. Yeah? Hey, Yorty, I looked at them west boundary fence posts. Shucks, they don't need fixing for a couple of weeks yet. Besides, I gotta paint some cupboards for the kitchen tomorrow. Say, who's gonna transplant them flowers? Yorty? I said, who's gonna transplant them flowers she wanted done? Maybe Mr. Danning will do it. He likes to throw dirt around. Let's put things straight before we go any further. I'll tell you this. Starting now, you're tying into hard work. You'll polish saddle leather from dawn to dusk. Or longer if I'm gonna ramrod this outfit. Maybe that's one thing you ain't gonna do. I ain't taking orders from no loudmouth fiddlefoot. Neither Randy or Leach. Go on, Yorty. Blap your tongue some more. Sure I will. If you had any sense, you'd be clean over the black bows by now. We don't take your kind of talk in this part of the country. So what do you think you're gonna do when younger Miles opens up on you? This, Yorty. <clears throat> Saddle up and get out. Now, I said. What about you, Andy? Who, me? Walk out if you want to, or stay and fight Rainbow. I ain't never shot a man. I don't even pack a gun. Then start now. You, Leech? Guess I better fix them boundary fence posts. Guess I better get started cleaning out the hen house, I reckon. Well, there you are. Out beyond Thessaly Canyon is where the box H1 is stuffed for years. Find his open range and 400 miles. That's finished now. Dried out? Froze out's more like it, by rainbow. If he's taking it over, we can take it back. Not Thessaly Canyon, you won't. Uh, six months ago, one of Rainbow's hands, Tip Henry, filed a homestead claim on that section. See, if he stays out the year on it, it's his. Then sells it to Miles. I want to look at Tip Henry's shack on the quad. How far is it? About a mile. But I can think of a lot of scenery I would rather see. Don't move. Andy! Throw that drifter's gun away! What's the matter, Stu? This ain't no way to act. Shut up! You're both coming with me! Come on, move! Property? Just coming up to meet my neighbors. While you met them, take a good look. I don't see anything worth looking at. You don't, huh? Take it easy, itchy fingers. You tough drifters will never learn, will you? Been everywhere, seen everything? Like anybody. Pretty handy with a six gun, huh? Maybe. Get out. Let's find out how tough you really are. Hey, wait a minute, Ernie. Chris ain't done nothing. Shut up, Andy. Go home and take care of your flower garden. Flower garden. You heard him. Go on back to your net. No witnesses, eh? That's right. Get going, Andy.
That's how to treat those tough drifters. Bust up their trigger fingers. Now watch him dog it out of here. When he comes to, put him on his horse and head him for the black bows. Tell him to keep riding. Sure, honey. Hold it! Drift them gun belts. All of you. All of you! You too, Ernie. You better be careful, Andy. Those things go off, you know. Where is he? What do you do with him? Last we seen him, he was heading for the Black Bows. Somebody better stop talking. Or I'm gonna blow somebody apart! Did you do that, Ernie? Why, Andy, you know better. His horse bit him. Ernie, I think I'm going to shoot you. Hold it, Andy. You just take care of the others. I'll take care of Come on, get over here. No, I don't want you to make a move. Somebody better start talking. He... he stomped on it. You've got six months left to live on it. To make it what Miles calls legal. Half those nights I'll come back and shoot it up till you move or I kill you. And you can tell Miles I won't need any Indians to help me. I'm, I'm sorry, dear. I didn't mean that. Oh, I know you didn't. It's, well, it's the only thing that seems to help. I understand, but drinking doesn't answer anything. I thought I told you to keep away from here, Abby. I, I was just visiting with Kate. Visiting, huh? The whole town's talking about your last visit with her. Let's get one thing straight, Younger. Abby's never done any drinking here. Kate was only trying to help me the other night. Which is more than you've ever done, Younger. Hello, everybody. 
Well, howdy, folks. Heavy darn if I don't believe you and that man of yours are the best-looking couple in Coroner Creek. Katie, there's nothing like a happy marriage to keep a woman looking beautiful. <laughs> is there anything wrong, daughter? No, Dad, I... I was... I was just telling Abby that new piano I bought her was sent out to the ranch today. She ought to be there. Yes, of course she should. We'll finish our talk at home, Abby. New piano. Abby, you're a mighty lucky girl. All the things Miles has done for you. Yes, all he's done for me. He's done a lot for you too, hasn't he, Dad? He sure has. Why well, might not even be sheriff if it hadn't been for him? What's the matter with her? Seems like everybody's jumpy today. Hey, bring me this pot roast. A lot of gravy. Bring a little catsup, too. Here you are, Mr. Miles. You can't tell me about Danny. You know all about him, Tip. Come on, have another drink. What are you doing away from Cecily Canyon, Tip? I guess you ain't heard what happened to Ernie. I heard about it. What's it got to do with you? What's it got to do with me? Why, why Danning same has kicked me off my own claim. I'm scared, Miles. He's the kicking us off dodo I ever seen. He run me off the box eight same way. I can understand you being scared, Yorty. But Tip here... I wasn't scared. Why, well, say, I told that... Well, I'm scared. I'm scared good, and I'm quitting. Your what? I'm quitting. I paid your fee to file on that land, Tip. I'm paying you good wages. I'm feeding you. And I'm giving you $1,000 for that quarter section, the minute you prove up on it. Isn't that enough? You don't get it. There ain't enough money in the world to keep me there. I'm quitting, I tell you. I ain't ever going back there. He'd kill me. I'll send some men out there with you every night. He'd kill them, too. He's crazy. Say, I'd like a crack at that tall... Shut up, Yordy. You haven't got a title to that land until you've proved up on it. Where does that leave me? Well, I don't know. But it leaves me alive, though. The minute he takes a shot at you, he'll be hunted down by the U.S. Marshal. We can't afford to hunt him down ourselves. It ain't legal. Say, that wouldn't stop you, Mr. Miles. Yordy, someday somebody's gonna poke your tongue down your throat. What happens to Danny ain't gonna interest me, with me in my grave. He said he'd come back every night and shoot up the place until I moved or got killed. And he said to tell you that he wouldn't need any Indians to help him do the job. What did you say about Indians? Uh, I don't savvy the Indian part. Did you know Danny from someplace else? That'll teach you not to walk out on me. You yellow back. Mr. Miles! I'm looking for, Sheriff. About filing charges against Ernie, you won't get anywhere. You hit him first. I hit him last, Sheriff. My friend, you're headed for trouble. You've given the folks around here no reason to love you. I'll do my best to protect you because it's my job. I appreciate that, Sheriff. And it's also my job to warn you that Frank Yorty, you kicked off the box eight. You're spreading stories that he's gunning for you. Did Miles tell you that? Yes, I did. But I didn't think O'Hay would pass it on. I want him to know what was going on so he could keep an eye on you and Yordy. That's real nice of you to look out for me that way. We don't go in for backstabbing here, Danny. No matter whose. This is a law-abiding community. Yes, sir. And I aim to keep it that way. You better tell that to Miles, not me. Now, look here, Miles. He already knows that. Personally, I don't think there's going to be any trouble. Personally, I think Yordy's just bluffing. Personally, I think... 
Personally, I think we might as well forget this thing. Don't move, Yorty. Well, I tell you to. Don't even put down that skillet. Well, it's, it's hot. You're going to be hot all over before I finish with you. What do you want with me? A little straight talk. Well, I, I can't. I can't hold it any longer. <laughs> Keep him high, Yorty. I heard you were out to get me. Get you? Where'd you hear that? Miles told the sheriff. Miles? Oh, that's a lie. I figured it was. That's why I'm here. Now then, what was your deal with Miles? Sheriff O'Hay thinks you're after me. So if I shot you, I could claim self-defense. I never made no deal with Miles. If I shot you just right, say, under that left shoulder blade, you know what'd happen to you, Yorty? You'd fall face down on that nice hot stove. Ever see a man with all the skin burned off his face, Yorty? You branded enough cattle. You know what happens to hide when it meets hot iron. Now, you wouldn't get an idea of my left hand slower than your right, would you, Yorty? But if you'd like to prove it. Well? All right, now, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you everything. What about a cup of that hot java? Yeah, sure. But I have a cup yourself. Settle your nerves. Now, you already tell me a story. Well... You know that box canyon back of the shack here? Yes. Well, we fenced it off all summer to, to save the feet. And then about, well, a week ago, we, we turned all of Della's herd into that canyon. What about it? Well, I, I told Miles that if the brush fence across the mouth of the canyon accidentally caught, accidentally caught fire, well, the grass would go. That grass would burn like pitch. What an idea that was, Yorty. The cattle would move ahead of the fire right up to the dead end of that box canyon. You murderous snake. What are you supposed to get out of it? Uh, $500. Uh, I was to meet Miles at B.G. Fulton's and get half of it tonight. And, and then after I set the fire, I, I was to get the rest of it. And then I was to head over the pass and... Get out of here. You think Miles would let you live after you set that fire? Why, he'd kill you when you went back for the other half of the money, and I'd be blamed for it. Yeah, that's right. Pack your stuff. You're getting out of here right now. And if you ever head back to Coroner Creek, I'll be waiting for you. Yeah. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Leach, I got a job for you. Take your blankets and ride up to Falls Canyon. I want you to camp there tonight, right at the brush fence. Don't make a fire and sleep light. If anybody drifts up, run him off. This is the first time I ever heard the rainbow outfit called cattle thieves, if that's what you mean. I don't. Just do as I say. Della. Hello, Chris. Where's Andy? Around someplace. I just sent Leach up to the canyon to have a look at the cattle. What for? Well, there might be a few strays. Oh. Aren't you going to notice my new dress? I already have. It's the latest fashion. It's pretty. Adela, about the cattle up in the canyon, 
Let's ship them now, take a profit while we're sure. Let's talk about the cattle another time. I haven't time. I'm headed for B.G. Fulton's. like what you'll see here. Who are you expecting? Younger Miles. He's coming here to meet the Audi, but he's going to find me instead. Get inside, quick. Yorty couldn't make it. Who's that? Danny, Yorty's run out on you. You're keeping your promise. Yes, a little every day. Hey, do you shoot somewhere else? I want to get some sleep. So you see, Kate, only instead of paying your after he set the fire, you would have killed him. Chris, why don't you let him go? Let him go? Yes. You got rid of Yorty. You ran out Tip Henry so the delegate had back her open range. You wrecked Miles' scheme there. You forced him to expose himself. Isn't that enough? Not for me, Kate. Chris, there's something or, or someone bigger than all of us that takes care of our injuries and squares things for us. I'll do my own squaring, Kate. Vengeance is mine. I will repay. Remember? I also remember an eye for an eye. No, Kate, I'm not going to turn back now. Miles must have done something pretty terrible to you. And after you kill him. What's ahead for you then? I hadn't thought that far. You mean you hadn't cared to think beyond that point? It doesn't matter what happens to me. But you have to live with yourself. Your hatred may destroy Miles, but it can also destroy you. 
Hate is something that can feed on itself for only so long. Don't worry about me. This fight with Miles is in the open now, and it's my fight alone. If anybody gets hurt, it's going to be me and nobody else. If you got hurt, that might hurt somebody else. That I, I can't help. You can, but you won't. This thing that happened tonight is... I don't want you to say one word about what happened tonight to anyone, not even your father. I hoped I could change you. I see now I can't. Nothing can. You're caught in a web of your own making, and instead of trying to search for a way out of it, you'd, you'd rather strangle in it. you, Abby. I'm in my own home. <gasps> that ever happened before, Abby? I couldn't bring myself to lay a hand on you, even to spank you, no matter how wild you got. Never thought I'd live to see the day my girl got slapped and I did nothing about it. A lot of things beginning to make sense to me now. You've only stayed here on account of me, haven't you? Figured an old man was entitled to lie comfortably in the sun when he was through, didn't you? Well, so did I, maybe. Chris! 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 What's troubling you, Andy? Uh, get on your horse. I'll tell you on the way back. I got a funny feeling it ain't good. I'll tell you the other way back to the ranch. Let's get going. I can't understand why Chris didn't tell me about it. All he said to me was that. 
Where were you, Leach? I told you to watch the cattle in Falls Canyon. Where were you? I didn't figure on no fire. I knew Miles' outfit wouldn't rustle our cattle, so I didn't see any sense in staying there all night. Nobody asked you to make sense of it. You should have done what you were told. Leach isn't to blame, Chris. You didn't tell him it was fire you were afraid of. You were afraid of fire, weren't you? Maybe. If you'd have told me it was fire you were afraid of, I'd have stayed. When I give an order, I don't have to explain it. It's your job to follow that order. All that cattle lost. Maybe you'll tell us who did it. I'm not sure. It might have been one of Miles' men or even Miles himself. But we can't prove anything unless Leach saw something. I didn't see nothing. You would have. If you'd have stayed like Chris told you. It wasn't Leach's fault. It was too, Miss Harms. Sorry for your bargain, Della. All you've brought us is trouble. He brought you Thessaly Canyon, didn't he? Tip Henry quit the country and lost the homestead. And you got back your old reins. If I remember rightly, I told you I'd a lightning. Dressed up for. I'm checking out too. No, you're staying, Andy. She needs you. Not me and Leach both, she don't. You belong here. Why, you're as much a part of the box H as that fence post there. Oh, I suppose so. And I'm not letting you ride out of here alone. Rode in alone. Mm -hmm. Drifting? It's just about it. As soon as I finish a little business in Carner Creek. One thing I never will forget. The way you walloped the dickens out of that Ernie Coombs that morning. <laughs> we done all right, didn't we? You did, Andy. Well, so long. Take care of things. Sure, Chris. <laughs> Better get out of these town duds and get into my working clothes, I reckon. Chris, I'm sorry for what I said a while ago. I was so upset and... Will you forgive me and stay on? I'm not letting you down, Della. I'll find the man that set that fire and you'll be paid back for the cattle you lost. There's nothing more I can do here. Yes, I know. You think more of your personal battle with Miles than you do of my loss, don't you? If you put it that way, I do. But remember this. You've got to face losing as well as winning, and if you can do that, you'll be all right. I'll be all right. I've known what it means to win. I know what it means to lose, too. Good luck, Della. Miss Harms, I shouldn't have let myself be caught midstream like this. Andy, I have a job for you. I want you to go up and take over Tip Henry's shack and Homestead Thessaly Canyon for us. Is this an order, Miss Della? Yes, it is. Oh, Andy, I'll send Leach up later with provisions. Yes, ma'am. Homestead Thessaly Canyon. Where are you going, to a powwow? That'll learn you. When you're told to sleep by the brush fence, sleep by it, I reckon. Sheriff, save it for your boss. 
And if you see him before I do, you can say I'm looking for him. All right, but Younger Miles ain't in town on Sunday for no church going. There's something peaceful about a church bell, isn't there, Dad? Well, I don't know. There's something ominous about the way it sounds today, Kate. There's an unhealthy air about the whole town. Jack, younger Miles been in yet? No. No, I ain't seen him all morning. Come on, boys. Drinks are on the house. How come? Because Miles ain't here. <clears throat> morning, Chris. Oh, good morning. Abby, this is Chris Danning. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Danning? How do you do? I've been hoping I'd have a chance to talk to you, Mrs. Miles. If you'll excuse me. Certainly. I owe you an apology for a couple of raw remarks I made. I accept your apology, although it was your right to say what you did. I don't think any man has that right, although at the time I, I thought it would serve my purpose. You know, in a way I'm grateful to you, Mr. Danning. Grateful? How? Miles is a cruel man, but he always checked himself before he went too far. It wasn't until you came to town that he began to lose control. Well, I, I hope things will be better for you now. They will be, now that I've, I've left him. Kate, I'll meet you at the church. I'm very pleased to have met you, Mr. Danning. Thank you. Kate, I'd like to have my room back. What happened to the box age? I quit the box age. You quit? But why? Falls Canyon was fired last night, and Della's prime bunch of two-year-olds was wiped out. Well, how could you leave at such a time? Well, I can help them all by finding the man who did it and making him pay. Miles? That's why I'm in town. That's a job for the law, isn't it? <laughs> the law in this town where the sheriff's working for Miles? Not anymore. Oh, Hayes against him and wants to fight him. Why don't you join the sheriff and fight with him? No, Kate, I'm sticking to my own way. I wish I'd known you before. Why? Because there's a better side to you. You're letting your hatred for one man destroy it. You seem to know a lot about it. I know all I need to know. Except the beginning. I even know the ending. I can only be one ending. But it's beyond that that's troubling you most. It's not just the killing of Miles. You're wondering whether it'll bring you freedom and the peace of mind you always thought it would. You don't think it would, do you, Kate? I can't give you the answer to that, Chris. You'll have to get it over with and find out for yourself. When did it happen? How? I came up on him at Tip Henry's homestead. He said he was planning to take over. He pulled a gun on me. It was me or him. He got it. He's telling the truth, Sheriff. I saw it all. Go on, Leach. Tell the Sheriff what you told me. Well, I... I Go on, Leach, I... and tell him. I saw them kill Andy. He's a liar, oh hey. there, shut up. Now, Leach, just what did you see? Well, I was riding up to Tip Henry's shack to take Andy some grub. Just as I was coming into the clearing, I saw Stu and Ernie. I heard him tell Andy to get. Andy started to go, and Stu shot him in the back. You dirty light Take it easy, Stu. Shut up, both of you. Oh, hey, if you let them ride out of here. They're not riding anywhere. Get off them horses, both of you. What for? I'm arresting you. You ain't gonna take that cow poop. We rode all the way in to tell what happened, just to give that crazy Andy West a chance to be very decent. 
You ain't arresting us for protecting ourselves. And neither is anybody else. You heard what the sheriff said. You're a shooting nigger. Get her over, sonny. Get in there. All right, Ernie. Inside. You must have forgot which side your bread's buttered on, oh, hey? You know, Danny, feels good to get up off my knees. You see, Kate, why I have to do it my way and now. Yes, I do. Good luck, Chris. say is this has been the most exciting Sunday that ever happened to Corner Creek. Sure was surprising to see the sheriff put younger Miles boys in jail. Surprising to see him jail anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Miles today? Nope, but if I was him and Chris Danning was looking for me, I'd want to be safe in jail with my boys. Howdy. Howdy. Looks like you've been riding hard, Danning. Not hard enough. Looking for younger Miles. Seen him? No, I ain't. show you put on, but you can open up this chicken coop now and let us out the back door. Bernie, I'm telling you for the last time, you're staying in there until you get a fair trial. <laughs> fair trial. You heard what I said. Why, you mangy old crow. Younger Miles will have something to say about that. Maybe. Oh, hey. What's the idea of locking up my boys? You always said you wanted things done legal. Well, that's just what I'm doing. Just like I told them, they're staying in there until they get a trial. What's come over you, O'Hay? You know, I made you sheriff, and I can break you just as easily. Maybe. But until you do, I'm still sheriff. I'm going to run things around here according to law. My idea of the law, not yours. If you expect me to sit around and watch you tear down everything I've built up, you're crazier than I think. I've worked hard to get where I am, done everything a man can do. I've lied, cheated, stolen. I've even killed to build a setup I've got now. And I'm not going to let any man destroy it. Least of all, you. Thank you. 
down. I don't know, I tell you. Where is he? In the town hall. We're going over there. Look, Danny. I didn't do nothing to you. Andy was my friend. Ernie killed him. Honest, I swear it. Did you ever get hit with a bullet? It's like a hunk of iron, ripping and tearing into you. Set you all on fire inside. Sometimes you don't die right away. You just bleed and hurt for a long time. Go on, open that door. No, I can't. I'd be walking right into Miles' bullets. And he got his in the back. Go on. Don't shoot, Miles! It's me, Stu! Don't come any closer, Danny. Now, you wouldn't shoot at your fingers, would you? He's always done your killing. Miles! I told you not to come any closer. you pulled in Conn's Canyon? Look, 
girl on that stagecoach was on her way to marry me. Maybe this will help you to remember. Pick it up, Miles. Pick it up. someone bigger than all of us. Then you found your answer? Yes, it's all over. In the memories? They're in the past. I'm free, Kate. I know now what I thought was going to be the ending. is only the beginning. I'm glad. 